What's up, fam? It is Michael Babbitt, and I'm taking you through seven days of sound design. That's right, one week, all Omnisphere. I've created seven different types of sounds, so each day I'll present a new sound, and I'll show you how it was made. Welcome to day three. It's analog polysynth day in Omnisphere. Ah, I know what you're thinking. How on earth can a digital software synth sound analog? Well, let's explore that now. Starting from the main screen, let's click on the Layers tab, and then you can see I've got all four layers occupied with DSP waveforms. We're starting with a Prophet 5 saw, Prophet 6 saw, then we got a Fearless saw, and Noise at the end. I'm going to start by soloing layer A, and then we'll go through each one individually so you can hear them. That was the Prophet 5 saw wave. Now let's check out the Prophet 6 saw wave. Melotone, not to be confused with melatonin. Let's check out the Fearless saw. It has a nice round sound to it. And then finally, the noise layer. So really, each layer does hold its own. You could play them individually without playing them all together as they're designed to be in this patch. So really, you've got five patches in one. Woo! All right, let's explore each patch. I've got a low-pass plus state variable 2 filter, which can be found in the specialty filters folder. Oh, right down here, off your screen. Well, anyway, you know where to find it now. Uh, the cutoff filter being modulated by the modulation wheel. I've done something a little different with the filter resonance, this time modulating it with velocity, so how hard I hit the keys. And when I combine the two, A lot of dynamic range there. Now remember, this is just layer A. Let's see what we've got on layer B. We're going to solo that. Here we have our Prophet 6 saw, and I'm using a low-pass Juicy 12 dB filter, which can be found right here. And again, we're modulating the filter cutoff with the modulation wheel. Sounds like a theme from Star Trek or something. Okay, let's switch over to layer C. We'll solo that, and you can see I've got a low-pass, juicy 12 dB filter here as well. And again, we're just keeping it simple, modulating the filter cutoff again here with modulation wheel. Let's check it out. Two thousand and twenty, a space odyssey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On layer C, I've got unison enabled here, and we've got some detuning, a little bit of drift enabled, which emulates imperfections in analog circuitry regarding pitch. And we've gone about halfway up here on the analog slider, which also emulates imperfections in analog circuitry. And then we've got the stereo spread turned up all the way, so we've got a nice stereo field. Now, to give you an idea of what the unison section does to the sound, let's turn everything down, then we'll play and adjust.
quite a difference, huh? So this is just part of the magic of making this patch sound analog. Another part would be employing a noise oscillator. So we've done so on layer D, classic to analog synthesis. Again, I'm using a low-pass juicy filter, modulating that with the modulation wheel. Now, let me show you a little trick that I learned. We're going to go into the modulation matrix zoom, and you can see... Uh, if I click on layer A here, I've got one, two, three LFOs. And if I go over here to my target, you can see they're modulating the fine pitch. Now, why on earth would I do that, you may be asking? Well, let's zoom out and look at those LFOs individually. So LFO 1, 2, and 3. Notice the rate knob is changing. And essentially, what this is doing is offering random sinusoidal pitch modulations. And using LFOs is another way to emulate the desired imperfections in analog circuitry. If we click on layer B and go back to the modulation matrix zoom, you can see I've done the same here, LFO 4, 5, and 6. Again, modulating the fine pitch. All right, let's zoom back out, and on layer B, LFO 4, you can see I've done something a little different here, a freeform LFO, with the rest being sine waves. All right, going back up to the modulation matrix of zoom again, looking at layer C. What have I done here? I've got an LFO modulating another LFO. What the <laughs> Ah, but wait, LFO 8 is modulating LFO 7's rate. What? <laughs> I'm rhyming. So then LFO 7 is modulating the amplitude of layer C, and that just adds more flavor to the imperfections of analog circuitry. But that's the sound we love, right? So let's go to page two. Eight LFOs wasn't enough, so I'm using a mod envelope now to modulate the fine pitch. If we go look at that, let's go to the envelope zoom, click on mod one, and you can see I got a sine wave. Now the nice thing is I didn't have to create that sine wave. There are multiple presets here available in the LFO style envelopes. You can choose from any one of those, but I grabbed the sign. Important to note is how I've got it set up here. I have it looping, of course we want that, but you can decide whether or not you want it to sync to clock here with the sync button. Okay, let's jump into the effects and click on the auxiliary tab and you can see I've got a spring reverb here and a retroplex tape echo, keeping it vintage with the effects. Now let's click on layer A's effects tab and you can see I've got an analog chorus instantiated. And then over on layer B, I've got another analog chorus instantiated. This time I've added a studio EQ and we're dropping about 7 dB of gain in the 49 hertz range. And that way we can carve out some low end frequency space for the rest of the layers. No effects on layer C or layer D. So let's go to the common section or Omnisphere's master bus. And you can see I have boosted the mid frequencies here a little bit by 2 dB and also added a little bit of boost here on the high frequencies as well, which gives the entire patch a little more sparkle. Now in some cases, like this one, I needed a compressor at the end of the chain, so I added one with 2 to 1 ratio and 9 dB of sustain. And by the way, the Precision Compressor in Omnisphere is one of my favorites because it's fairly transparent. Ah oh, yes, and let's not forget that our auxiliary master send is going to our spring reverb and tape echo on the auxiliary. And there you have it, my analog polysynth. Thanks again for joining me for seven days of sound design. <laughs> I think I just wrote a jingle. I'll see you on day four. Bye now.